It's been described as the great Australian dream, owning property. Now, whether that is for investment purposes or to own your own home as your primary residence. For generations, we have been fed that owning a house or owning some form of property is the thing that every single Australian should and needs to work towards. Decades ago, people were buying houses in their early to mid 20s. Now we're looking at people in their 30s all the way up to their 40s, waiting for that opportunity to get their great piece of the Australian dream, owning their own home. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I used to believe in this dream and still kind of do think that owning property is something really amazing and that a lot of people do wanna work towards, but why do we wanna be fed this dream when a lot of the time the reality is that this dream can cause a lot of financial stress and lead us to potentially resent the house that we buy. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about mortgage stress and my own real life experience with owning property and the potential reason why my partner and I are thinking about selling our house within the first year of owning. This is going to be a long video, so I do advise that maybe you get yourself a drink. I have a cup of tea and I'm gonna be talking about all the reasons why my partner and I are considering selling our home within the first year of actually purchasing it. I will preface as well is that if you do have any negative opinions or if you are planning on leaving any negative comments about um, entitlement or privilege or anything like that, please um, just consider before you press the post button just because you know, we're not really about negativity here. I am really being honest and my partner was being really honest with me about feelings. He does not want to join me in this video today because he's not quite ready to talk about or to give his opinions on this particular topic. But in the current living crisis that we are in, I think that this topic is really quite important. And I also think that it might uh, benefit people who might be weighing up if they want to sell their home or any sort of financial stress opinions or thoughts that they might have for themselves. I do think that it is important that we talk about this because not everyone on YouTube is living this lavish lifestyle, even though a lot of the time that is what we see. And the reality is, is that a lot of people are really struggling at the moment. And especially with the interest rates continuously rising in Australia, mortgage prices are one of the biggest financial strains that can have not only on a person, but on a relationship as well. Okay, before I go any further, I thought that we might as well talk about background. So this house that I'm currently in is not the first home that Lewis and I have purchased together. Lewis is my partner. Uh, back in 2019, Lewis and I decided to look for our first home. And we were looking at two bedroom units in like all different suburbs. Like we weren't particular in what kind of suburb that we wanted to live in. We were more concerned about the price bracket and the actual features that the house had that would match us and what we wanted. So we settled on our first home in t January, 2020, just before COVID hit, like all the pandemic. So we like to dub that house or that unit as our COVID home because we spent all of COVID throughout it and it really was such a good house for us. And while we were there for about two or so years, Lewis worked from home there pretty much every day. And the more time that we kind of spent there, the idea that we got into our head was that we needed some extra space. At the time we were considering potentially having kids, like not now, but maybe in the future. And so we thought that we needed a much bigger home to, to house ourselves and potential children. So in 2020, we decided to start looking at bigger homes. We started looking at three and four bedroom places to live. We did find a couple of places that we really did like. However, on two occasions, we did talk ourselves out of it just because the property didn't feel right and it just wasn't something that we were really, like that we didn't fall in love with the place straight away. Our idea of like buying a home is that you should walk into the home and be able to see yourself living there for a really long time or be able to see yourself at least living there. And of course, having a connection with the home too was something that Lewis and I really did value, especially when we did inspections. In 2022, we moved into this home and we loved it at first. It had everything that we wanted. Single level, beautiful landscape, backyard, privacy, really quiet area, a little studio out the back where Lewis could potentially put an office or we were gonna turn that studio into something else. Now, also around this time is when interest rates really, really started to take it up a notch. They started to get really quite high. The mortgage repayments just kept going up, up and up. 
And I guess in February of 2023 is when Lewis came to me and started to tell me that, you know, he was finding that this place was becoming really quite financially stressful. Every month, our mortgage was going up and it wasn't going up by a little bit. It was going up significantly higher than I guess what we had initially anticipated. We didn't expect interest rates to continuously rise as quick as what they did. We were kind of expecting maybe a couple of interest rates because the Reserve Bank said that it wasn't gonna go up too much, but then every single month since we had owned, it had just increased by a couple of hundred dollars every single time. So now Lewis and I are weighing up if we really want to keep this house or if we potentially want to look at selling it and doing something else. So why did we buy this house if we are now thinking that we're going to sell it? So like I said before, Lewis and I really did think that we needed more space, even though at the time, well actually still at the time, it is just the two of us plus our two cats. We were looking for a house that was kind of gonna be not even like our forever home because we never want a place to be our forever home. Lewis loves to move around a lot. He likes to live in different locations and different areas, but we thought that we needed a house that was going to, I don't know, kind of flourish our life a little bit more and if we were to have kids like that we needed a home to be able we needed a much bigger home to be able to bring our children up in i guess as well because lewis was working from home every single day he was feeling like that he needed some form of separation within the place that we were living because the office was right next door to our bedroom he felt that he could never have any kind of escape from work because he was always kind of working near where he slept and yeah, that found he, found, he found that really quite hard to concentrate and I don't know, didn't really quite enjoy working from home as much at that time. So we thought that if we had a big house where he could have kind of a separate area for his work, that then it wouldn't feel like that he was at home all the time. And we thought that having a much bigger home would be able to do that. In hindsight, that just sounds very privileged and kind of stupid really, because we loved the first house that we bought. When we sold it in 2022, we made sure that it went to a first home buyer. We didn't want to sell it off to an investor because to us, it was a first buyer's house and it was so good to us. We absolutely loved the home and we really wanted someone else to enjoy it as much as what we did. We moved into here and we kind of started to furnish it and we realized how much money it was really going to cost us to furnish this entire house. It has three bedrooms, a studio out the back, two living areas, a dining area, a kitchen, two bathrooms, and a laundry. So considering that in our previous house, we had two bedrooms, a small living area, small dining area, kitchen, and a laundry, this place that we bought is about three times, if not more, actually probably about four times as big. So Lewis and I did have really big plans on going traveling. We really wanted to go back to Bali for a month. We wanted to go to Japan. We potentially wanted to go to Europe, but with the increase in interest rates, that idea or that dream kind of just kept getting pushed further and further away because to pay for this mortgage and be able to have someone at this house and look after our cats was just going to cost us just way too much money. It didn't make sense for us to pay for a mortgage this large and go on holidays where we weren't actually using the home. So what we had decided with being able to offset the mortgage a little bit, we had actually planned for the studio out the back to become into an Airbnb. It has a section where the bedroom is cut off from the living room and it's actually quite a big space. So we thought that we could make that area into an Airbnb and be able to kind of supplement our mortgage that way. But then what we thought is that because we have to spend more money on that studio and this isn't like a huge tourist kind of suburb area, like it's touristy, but it's not majorly tourist driven. Like there isn't going to be a lot of traffic all the time throughout the year. We also had to take into consideration the cost of laundry and the time that it would take Lewis and I both to clean and look after the studio. If we were to pay someone, we may as well just not have done the studio anyway, because those wages would have basically just taken the whole nightly rate of what we would have charged for that Airbnb. 
Don't get me wrong, if someone was a stay-at-home parent or if they were just a stay-at-home person, the studio out the back as an Airbnb is just such a amazing idea and it's such a great space and great layout that it really, really would have worked for someone who didn't have to work during the day. But because Lewis works for himself, he obviously has to work during the day and I, as a casual relief teacher, I have to work when I get called. I can't really say no. So that was our idea was to make that into an Airbnb. And the more that we thought about it, the more work that we thought that it would be. Like if we had kids and I was a stay at home mom or like a stay at home parent, it would have been an amazing idea because I wouldn't have to like hire anybody else. I could have done all the laundry, all the cleaning, everything like all the maintenance I would have been able to do but at this time working five days a week it just seems way more stressful to work throughout the night cleaning the studio than what it does for the income to potentially be brought in like the income that this studio would have brought in wouldn't offset the mortgage that much if that makes sense so in saying that now Lewis and I were talking about what we really want our life to look like you know do we really want it to be about owning a beautiful home and really staying within this home kind of forever and sacrificing the potential to travel more often than what we do now do we yeah like just want to work the grind paying down this really big mortgage that we took out really not kind of foreseeing the issues or like the interest rates that were coming and yeah, like we kind of just discussed, like if you could do, like what would you do with your life if you wanted to do it? And both of us really love travel. Travel is kind of what I work for, apart from paying off a house, but it is really what I enjoy doing. I love going to different places, different countries, learning about different cultures, eating all the different foods, even though I am terrified at flying, it is something that I really look forward to. And it's the biggest value, I guess, that I have, one of the biggest values I have in my life. So the idea of having a home as being the great Australian dream is kind of not as strong as what it used to be. I'd say that when I was in like my 20s, like my mid 20s, I was really kind of, yeah, like working towards owning my own property because I thought that that's what you had to do because Australian culture is very much like, well, why aren't you owning a home? Why are you renting? That's wasted money. You're paying off somebody else's mortgage. Those kind of comments really do start to come up when you tell people that you're not wanting to buy a home. And yeah, so we kind of really had to think about, well, do we want to work forever paying off this house? Like we're going to be 62 by the time this house is paid off, like fully paid off. Like, is that something that we really want? Or do we want other things in life where we rent a place and put the extra money towards holidays or towards investing where we potentially can retire a lot earlier than what we anticipated because the amount of money that it, we would, that it would take to maintain this house and for council rates and for insurance and maintenance and all that sort of stuff that can go towards other things rather than just having this roof over our head. I really do wanna preface in saying that we do understand how lucky we are to be able to have afforded this home. And while it is not a massive financial strain at the moment, we potentially see it as being one. And so we are like thinking about, well, do we take the hit now while we're still young, where we can still earn all that money back? Or do we potentially keep this house and potentially like have to pay way more than what we should for this home or do we sell it and save the money that we would have been paying on the mortgage and put it towards other things because at the at this moment in time rent is way 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 cheaper than owning a home our mortgage at the moment is over five thousand dollars a month and we could get a three bedroom unit or a three bedroom house for around six hundred dollars a week so around twenty four twenty five hundred dollars a month so we potentially have the opportunity to cut our like living expenses by 50%, even though we wouldn't be owning any type of property. And like owning types of owning property really isn't that big of a deal to me anymore. My idea is having a home base, which is super important. So having somewhere that I can come back to. And like, you know, if we go on holidays for a month, like we still have the place that we're living at. It's just that the rent is a lot cheaper, which means that we can potentially go traveling for longer. And if my mum wants to go traveling at the same time, we can always then afford someone to look after our pets 
rather than putting them like in their own home rather than putting them in like a cattery which again is something that's super important to me like my pet's well-being is very very important and if we have a cheaper rent and we go traveling for a longer period of time i can pay someone who i trust or who we trust to look after them in their own comfort space which would be their home so yeah like we we really want our lives to not be mundane we kind of want to be able to do whatever we want whenever we want that includes like travel like if we really want to go away for six weeks and pay someone to look after the cats like we really want to be able to do that but at the moment we kind of feel like that we're stuck in this mortgage because if we want to go traveling for a month well we have to add on five thousand dollars to that travel budget because we're paying for a mortgage that we're not even using for that month and some people might say well why don't you put it on airbnb well our cats live here and when we go away like my mum comes up and stays here which is amazing i'm super grateful that she does that but again it's like we're not using the place and we're paying for something that is so expensive and we're not getting out of it what we initially thought that we would so yeah, now I'm going to talk about like owning versus renting. I said before, like renting at the moment is just so much more affordable than owning a property because when you rent, you don't have to put a deposit down. You don't have to pay stamp duty. You don't have to pay council rates, any maintenance. You don't have to pay for any insurance, like none of those reoccurring costs apart from the deposit and the stamp duty that you have to pay every single year. All you have to worry about is paying for your bond, your rent, renter's insurance if you really want it. And then obviously if you want to like do something to the rental property and are willing to pay for it, like you, that's some kind of cost that you have to incur as well. But yeah, I think that renting at the moment is, it just sounds way more appealing to us. And even though it's paying off someone else's mortgage, those extra dollars that we're saving, we're actually putting towards our future self. So in towards investments, in towards super, something else that could potentially help us to retire early. Whereas this home, there's no way that we would be able to retire early because we would end up paying like what, 2.5 times more maybe than what we paid for it over 30 years. So to us, it mathematically makes sense. Even though I do want to say this as well. I love this house. This house is beautiful it is so unique it was like no other house that we had ever seen the front house the front half of it is original 1950s the floorboards are original the front is original like it is the landscape at the backyard is absolutely gorgeous and i love this house but at the moment it's just not making both of us feel good like we don't feel good living here as much as what we thought that we would so at the like look i don't really have like a yes or a no if we are going to be selling within a year but it does look like highly possible that we will be selling maybe just after a year of owning we are talking to a real estate and getting an evaluation we are very much aware that the market is dropping and that there's nowhere near as much competition as what there was when we bought this house and so we are also very well aware that we may not get back exactly what we paid for it we are expecting to possibly sell this for less than what we paid which again that's what i'm talking about the financial hit for like we are prepared to take a lower amount for this house and be able to then save back up and put that money towards other things. Um, but yeah, I really do hope that like you guys understand where I'm coming from and that we really don't want to be stuck here. Like uh, we're not stuck here because we are, we're doing okay financially, but for me personally, like I don't have a high income. Like I could certainly not afford this house by myself if something was to happen to Lewis. So yeah, that we also have to take that into consideration as well. So I'm just going to answer a couple of questions at the moment that some people have asked me over on my Instagram. I didn't get too many responses, but I thought that I'd include those questions in this video anyway. So the first question says, have you considered switching over to interest only payments for a short period of time? Um, no, I don't know. We haven't considered or thought about it. And I'm not sure if you can do that with like an offset. Like I don't know if you can have an offset account and an interest only payment um, because we are like seriously considering selling the house. We're not looking at changing anything at the moment. If we decide that we do want to keep it, I guess that's the potential that we could look at. If we decided to keep this house, we would be looking at trying to pay the mortgage off a lot quicker um, rather than trying to change kind of like 
principal only or interest or fixed or whatever, we would try and pay it off as quick as we possibly could. So then we don't have to pay so much interest, if that makes sense. So no, we haven't looked at interest only. Uh, have you tried to get a lower rate? We're with ING, which I believe is the lowest, one of the lowest interest rates on the market at the moment. We did go to our mortgage broker and try to get her to renegotiate a lower interest rate because we are under the 80% thingy like we had a 20% deposit so we are able to refinance if we need to but yeah she hasn't got back to us just yet so I don't know maybe again like we could negotiate or try to negotiate a lower interest rate if we decide to keep the home what are your strategies for paying off your mortgage as quick as possible uh, again like if we were to keep this house we would be putting all of our savings into an offset so then we didn't have to pay as much interest therefore the less interest that you pay the quicker your mortgage gets paid off so all of our savings would go into the offset account to offset the interest um my interest rate predictions i personally think that they are still going to continue i think that if the rba in 2022 said that they're not going to raise the interest rates until 2024 and then they've all of a sudden what done it 11 or 12 times in 13 months i think that they're going to keep going up personally i don't think that it's going to slow down really anytime soon i think next month or this month is it this month or next month i don't know i know that last month that or this month i'm getting really confused they didn't raise it but i have a feeling they're going to do it again like i feel like they're giving us like a little rep reprieve and then like sprinkling those interest rates on to us again uh, plans for mortgage extra payments uh, or saving and make lump payment at end of term like I said like we could possibly do that but we would most likely put money into an offset account rather than paying like lump sums I don't really know how you would do that either again like that's a question for our mortgage broker but yeah like if we had any extra money we would be putting that into the offset account um yeah just so then we still potentially have access to that money if we need it but it's down paying the interest a lot like quicker and obviously paying off the mortgage a lot quicker as well i really like this question do you feel like you've stretched yourself too thin with your mortgage yeah i think that we do i i think that we did i think that we had lifestyle creep like lewis was earning a really good amount of money like my crt work was pretty consistent I think that we thought that we could really afford this place and be super comfortable. And now that's just not the case. Like it's so expensive to own this property. The property itself is too big for us to maintain by ourselves, especially because we have no bloody idea what we're doing when it comes to gardening. So we actually have to pay someone to come and do the maintenance for us. Otherwise we would be chopping down things that like will probably fall on the home. Like it's way too much for both of us to maintain. So yeah, I think that we did stretch ourselves too thin with our mortgage. I think that we, we didn't not overcapitalize. That's not the word I'm looking for. We did, yeah, really lean into that lifestyle creep and say like, we really deserve this home and we really need this home. Like we do not need this home. It is just the two of us plus our two cats. We are not planning on having kids like either like in the next couple of years or if ever. So like just us two in this house is the dumbest idea. <laughs> like it's just, if I could like show you the scale of this home, I think, yeah, like we thought that we really did want and need this house. We were like, yeah, we're gonna entertain all the time. We'll have parties here all the time. Like we'll have people here all the time. Lewis and I hardly ever go out. Like I've got like two friends. Lewis has like a couple of friends, like who are we entertaining? <laughs> I think that, yeah, we had like this grand idea of what this house was going to do for our social life and that, yeah, we were going to have all these Christmas parties and birthday parties and yeah, we've hosted like twice in like a year. So yeah, I think that we did stretch ourselves too thin because I wanted to go back to Bali for a month this year, couldn't afford it. I wanted to go to Europe this year, couldn't afford it. I want to go to Japan in January, probably can't afford it because what I'm paying, my portion, my portion of the mortgage is almost what we were paying for a month of mortgage in our old place. So that should tell you something. So like our old mortgage at our old unit was about $2,000 a month. I'm paying 1,600, just me, that's just my portion. So yeah, I think we did stretch ourselves too thin, which is a really, it's a really annoying lesson learned but we're kind of happy that we're learning this lesson now 
rather than in 10 years when if we have kids like how are we going to pay for this mortgage when it's just like just Lewis working and I don't have like any kind of income for like a year. Do you regret selling, buying when you did? I don't think so because again, like that's a really good question. So we sold our unit um, for around $40,000 more than what we thought we would. We honestly thought that when we sold our unit, we were going to like break even because units don't really fluctuate too much in value. They kind of just stay the same. But because we had renovated it a little bit, we had styled it really well, we actually ended up getting like quite a fair bit more money than what we thought that we would. In saying that though, we think that we way overpaid for this place. So even though we got a lot more money for our old place that we sold, we then bought for I think more than what we should have paid. And I think because it was the styling in this home, like we fell in love with the styling of this house and because we had been looking for like eight months or something, again, it's like that frustration of like, I just want a place. Like I just want to like have a bigger place and like own a bigger home when in actual fact, like we didn't need this place and we certainly didn't need a house this expensive because again, it's just the two of us and we don't have kids. Um, yeah, I really liked that question. Thank you for that question, Sarah. What changes have you made to accommodate higher mortgage rates? So the changes was that we haven't been traveling as much as what we thought that we would. We, when we were at our old place, we used to go away on the weekends, like quite often, every couple of months, we've gone away once or twice on the weekend in this place. And we've gone to Bali, which I think like, yeah, it's so amazing that we can still travel a little bit, but it's nowhere near as much as what we thought that we would because most of our income is going towards this place. So we've had to cut back on the travel, which is what we both really love. And that's something that we really do value. We've also had to cut back on like not cut back, but we haven't even finished styling this home. And we've been here since November. Like we don't have a rug under the dining table. Our front living room has nothing in it. It's an empty room. Our front veranda, there's no seats. Our back deck, there's no dining table. Like there's no outdoor table. Like we, are putting so much money into the mortgage every single month that we cannot afford to even style this place to make it a home, which I think is one of the biggest issues about us not being as connected with this place is because it costs so much money for us to actually style it. Like if I show you the walls behind me, there are so many hooks there and none of those hooks have any kind of artwork or pictures or anything like that. Because again, like there's so many of them that again, it's gonna cost like a fortune to actually style this home the way that we would want to, to be styled. Um, and then a, another question, I actually had this question quite a lot when I asked people to ask me questions a little while ago, was are you going back full-time teaching to help pay more mortgage? I don't wanna sound, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, but I don't want people to come for me and be like, well, you need to do like your part and whatever. So one of the reasons why I left full-time teaching or took leave for two years for full-time teaching is because I wasn't happy and I really was not enjoying the job anymore. I hated it. I was so anxious all the time and I'm not really an anxious person and I was so stressed all the time. I wasn't happy. I just didn't feel like myself. And since doing CRT for the last year and a half, I have loved it. Like I've fallen back in love with teaching because that's what I do. I teach. I don't have to do any of the admin. I don't have to do with parents. I don't have to do reports or planning or anything like that. I just get to do my job, which is the teaching part and leave. And so that's a really big conversation with Lewis and I as well, is that if we want to keep this house, I have to go back full time. Like if we decide that we don't want to sell, it's not really an option. Like I have to go back. I have to take the job back next year, but I don't want to, like I really, I'm not enjoying, like I really, sorry, I really was not enjoying full time. And my school is 50 minutes away, 45 to 50 minutes away. So I'll be tired, stressed, anxious, possibly. Like obviously I could go back and have the best year ever, but I'm just really enjoying my job at the moment. I'm so happy and I kind of look forward to like going into different classes and seeing different kids and sometimes going to different schools. So yeah, that's also a conversation is that if we decide to keep this house, that's not a question. I, yeah, we'll have to go back full time to help support um, the mortgage, even though at the moment, like I'm still putting a lot of 
money towards the mortgage, but it would just help Lewis out a lot more. But yeah, if we were to sell this home and rent, no, I won't be going back full time. I will be sticking with casual teaching probably forever because I really do enjoy it. And I won't feel so guilty about not putting as much money towards something. Like if we rent, we could go 50-50 because the rent would be a lot more affordable. And so then, yeah, even though it still probably won't be because Lewis and I are very, we're a couple that is like where things should be equitable, not equal. So because Lewis earns more than me, he would be paying more rent than me because he has the ability to save more than me. And yeah, like that's not really fair. Like if we were to split it 50, 50, I wouldn't be able to save as much. So that's yeah, we're a very equitable couple, not an equal couple. So yeah, if we were to rent, I would certainly still pay rent. I just wouldn't be paying as much as Lewis and he's fine with that. Like he, totally agrees that we should both have the opportunity to save money so then we can travel, so then we can invest, do all the things that we really love. Do you guys regret getting a bigger mortgage? Yes, we do. Simple answer, yep, we do. We do regret it. Um, it's kind of, yeah, that sounds awful, but like I said, like we do really love this home and it is an amazing property and it's beautiful, we love it. But yeah, we do regret getting a mortgage that we a big mortgage that we don't need to keep like keep in mind that if we had two kids we would need a house like this this would be a perfect home for an actual family for a family that has two three kids like this place would be perfect ideal but we regret getting a bigger mortgage for just us two we really wished that we had kept our old unit because it was just perfect for us it was quiet still it was just enough space Lewis could go drive to a co-working space and work there rather than working from home. Whereas here, he's a bit more isolated because it's like so far away from all other co-working spaces that it just doesn't make sense for him to go there and then come back. Um, yeah, we do regret it a little bit. Um, do you feel pressure to go back full-time teaching due to rise in interest rates and cost of living? Yes. Again, if we sell, uh, if we keep this house, yes, I do feel the pressure to go back. Um, yeah, we're kind of not, someone asked about like the Airbnb reno, we're not doing anything with it at the moment. It's just kind of sitting there. Um, it looks really good. <laughs> like it, it, the studio actually looks really amazing. I think that we are fantastic interior designers, but yeah, we're not doing anything with it at the moment. Um, yeah, someone said, do you feel like you should have waited longer before upgrading your house? Yep. Like, I think that we should have waited until we had kids. Like if we decided to have kids, I think, yes, we should have waited. And if we were to sell this, Lewis and I were talking about the fact that we probably wouldn't buy again until we either had kids or until we were certain that we wanted that place. Like we were pretty certain about this one as well, but yeah, we were kind of like, yeah, like we're going to grow our kids up here. But then Lewis is sort of like, well, like I like to move around. So I would like our kids to live in different places. And yeah, it's, it's really hard, especially because like, you know, as a couple, like you do have to not negotiate, but you do have to compromise. And it is really important that if you are feeling like this, that you are able and open and like are able to have these open and honest conversations with your partner because financial stress is one of the leading reasons why people break up or divorce. And, you know, I'm really grateful that, you know, Lewis came to me with feeling like this and, you know, that because it, like before that it was having quite a bit of strain on our relationship because he wasn't telling me what was going on. And I knew that he wasn't happy, but he wasn't telling me why he wasn't happy. And now that I know, you know, we're kind of, negotiating and compromising. Okay, well, what do you want out of life? What do you want out of life? Where can we meet in the middle? That type of thing. So yeah, um, you know, like if it was up to Lewis, he'd go live in Bali for a month, a year, but like, I don't want to do that because we've got cats. So I've said that, you know, if we sell this house and we rent a place, like you can go for as long as you like, and then I can just go back and forth and we can do things like that because the rent will be half the price of this mortgage. Like we could afford to do all those kinds of things. But yeah, I know this video is really quite long and I'm very sorry, but yeah, if you have any questions or any comments or anything, please make sure that you leave them down below. Don't forget to give this video a like for the honesty. 
for at least the honesty, I guess, in this video. And I will see you guys sometime in the very near future. Bye.